some of the features and capabilities of the Workforce Planning module Carpe Datum has developed utilizing the IBM Cognos TM1 platform and Enterprise Services. Enterprise Services is a platform that works with TM1 that allows developers to easily create web applications that make it easy for end users to navigate and manipulate data even in the most complex TM1 models all without having to deal with the complexities of the TM1 API. Users enter the workforce planning application by selecting a button on the landing page. They're then directed to a status page which allows them to pick their cost center. That cost center is used as the context for each of the remaining tabs. The Workforce tab presents a list of employees that are currently associated with the cost center. Cost center owners can then review the list of employees and make any necessary adjustments for future employee actions. The information from TM1 is presented in a grid, as you can see here. This grid is designed to be sortable so that if you click a header, it sorts the employees both ascending and descending. It also allows you many of the standard sorting and filtering features that you would find in Excel. And it also allows you to group the employees and look at them by groups if you would like. Once an employee is selected, action buttons pop up at the top of the screen for each action you can take. For a current employee, you can choose to transfer them, promote them, terminate them. You can view their compensation and their details. In this case, let's go ahead and click on the details button. And what this shows is the attributes associated with that employee. The compensation button brings up a screen which shows that employee's compensation for the current year. You can actually select the next year. You can also filter it and sort it top to bottom. So in this case the employee's salary for the total year of 2015 was 76000 For this particular application we did all of the standard benefits and tax calculations. We even did some extras for um, employee incentive programs and things like that just because this particular company needed that type of capability. Once you have that employee selected, each of these buttons is now context sensitive. So when you select a transfer button, it brings up a window that has a nice dialog box with date pickers and things like that that if I choose to transfer this employee to another department and let's say I transfer them as of next Monday I now get a list of departments that I can subsequently transfer him to we can give him a new job code as well and a new salary and that employee gets transferred out of this department and moved into another department. To add a new employee, you simply select the Add button. A user can type in a new employee's name. They can determine whether they're an addition, so a brand new employee or a replacement for existing employee. In this case, he's going to be an existing. Um, we can type in a uh, manager's name. You'll notice that this is an autocomplete field. Here, they can also choose whether that employee is going to be a salary-based employee or an hourly employee. If you select hourly, you'll notice that the application automatically gives you differing drop-downs that would need to be entered. 
In this case, let's just make them salaried. And then you can indicate whether he's part of a union in this case. These are just filling out basic attributes. Let's make give him a start date of the 20th. We can put in a new job code, whatever that would be, and add a note for a new employee. In this case, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. All I need to do is click Save. At that point, what we've done is the system automatically ran a process to add that employee to this list. And he's right here. If I want to go in and see his new compensation, I can click the button and you can see that he his compensation starts in October and continues through the remainder of the year. If I want to subsequently transfer that employee, I can do that as well. Let's go ahead and transfer him as of, say, the 10th of December. Pick a different cost center, new job code. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to switch him to be an accountant there. He's going to get no real change in his salary. And what you'll notice is that already adjusted that employee. So if I go look at his compensation, you'll see that his compensation drops down in December because he's been transferred out of this department and into another department. Now that I've made all the adjustments I'd like to make for this set of employees, I can click the Workforce Allocation tab. At which point, I'm presented with a list of employees in the department, as you can see here, and I can select one of those employees and I can then allocate them amongst different categories. In this case, this company needed to allocate the total costs, labor costs, for an employee between expenses, product and service expenses, capital, and cost of goods sold. This particular employee, as you can see, for the whole year is simply split 6040. Down below here, we've added a set of charts and graphs that the users can see if they want to analyze that information a little bit further. There's also a radio button that allows them to see those monthly expenses broken down as needed. And if the user wants to, let's say, reallocate that information, let's say it's going to be uh, a product project is ending here in October and we know that so let's go ahead and take this down to 15 percent for this month and set this the next two months uh, down to zero put a zero in there and a zero in here then what the user would do is go ahead and click this allocate employee button it allocated the employees and I don't know if you saw it but you saw it actually popped up um, some changes it had little change indicators in the boxes but you can see now that he's gone to be a hundred hundred percent allocated to expense because let's say he rolled off the project or something like that and you can see it re reflected in the graph here you'd also see it reflected in these ex this particular chart down below. Once you've completed all of your employee allocations and data entry, you can then utilize the cost center summary page to see a breakdown of those expenses for this cost center, as identified up here, and a comparison against other scenarios. So you may compare your current budget versus actuals as we did here, or you can compare budget version one versus budget version two in this free form sort of report. We also put a few extra charts on the page to allow you to see the employee breakdowns and also analyze and see, okay, where do I spend the most money by job title, that type of thing.
if you need to do more in-depth analysis, we simply integrate with TM1 Web. So all you have to do is click that button and it brings up a TM1 Web Cube Viewer where you can do all of your browsing, slicing, and dicing just as you would in a normal TM1 application to do that detailed deep dive kind of analysis. In this application, we've also done some integration with the remainder of TM1 on this reporting tab. What the reporting tab does is it shows all of the items that appear in TM1 applications, in certain TM1 application folders. So if I want to click a button here, like I want to see employee compensation by allocation type, I can click that button and what happens is in this window it pops up a TM1 web view and I can navigate and open up multiple views in this sort of experience. So you get all of the power of TM1 web combined with all of the guided experience that you saw on these other tabs. What I'd like to do now is show you what the original application looked like uh, that we just saw in the more guided experience. Here's what it used to look like in TM1 Web. As you can see, it provided the same sort of employee listing um, that we had above of the employees that are in your particular department. But what you, you can see the big differences of when you go to add an employee, we did the hyperlinks and you have to go in and fill each one of these components out. There's no guided experience. There's no real data validation here. There is no drop downs or date pickers. I mean, there's a few drop downs, but they're not particularly uh, you know, compelling. So that's how this initial application looks. In another video, I'm going to take you through a detailed comparison of how a TM1 web style application, this one in particular, compares with more of the guided experience that we have shown you here.